one of the gentlemen um, who was part of my first conversation um, related to cannabinoids and my health and my dysfunction in health is going to be up here on stage next. His name's Dr. Eric Goodman, and he is the creator of Foundation Training, which if you're not familiar with, is a fantastic modality for being just a better version of yourself inside and out. And it's, uh, it's with great pleasure that I introduce Dr. Goodman. Thank you kindly, sir. It's a pleasure. I brought my notes for this one. I'll try to speak as closely to the mic as I can. If you can't hear me, just yell as you've been for the past five or six speakers. <laughs> so first off, Ethan, thank you for inviting me, for letting me be a part of this, for putting this on. Uh, as a doc, this is something that's very near and dear to me, and I'm going to treat you all as if you were my patients for just a very brief amount of time. Thank you. I will. This way I can drop it when I'm done. <laughs> I'm going to speak to you all as if you're my patients because in my opinion, the human race, the human species, we are all somebody's patient. And unfortunately, we're only as good as the information that our doctor, our physicians, our team of, of treatment professionals has. That's our treatment. That's our care. That's how well or good or healthy we're going to get. And if you were my patients, I would want you to know that you have more power within your body to feel good than any exogenous, including cannabis plant, can give you. And the only reason that a cannabis plant works when you smoke it, when you drink it, when you eat it, whatever it might be that you do, is because you have something called your mammalian endogenous cannabinoid system, which is a really, really fancy word that was known, it was named after the plant that made us feel good, by the way. It's not, the plant wasn't named after this cannabinoid system. A bunch of people started getting stoned and they felt really good and they started seeing different things happening. And a bunch of scientists decided to figure out or try to figure out what was happening. And as a result, they found the most plentiful system within the human body. And don't take that lightly or lightly. It's, it's very real. The stigma of cannabis is the only thing that people are worried about anymore because the science is there. And the science has very little to do with the plant, with the exception that it can trigger the receptors of the endogenous cannabinoid system, which in and of itself makes tremendous change in the human body. Tremendous. You'll hear sort of anecdotal evidence in cancers, and you'll see some real evidence in cancers, and you'll hear anecdotal evidence in, in all sorts of, you know, from Alzheimer's to multiple sclerosis to autoimmune disorders, and you'll hear these anecdotal studies, and you only hear the anecdote because it is so freaking hard to get real science out when you're not supported. But there's over 20,000 published articles about the science of the endogenous cannabinoid system and its capacity to help you heal. Have you all heard of the, the term neuroplasticity? It's pretty famous these days, yeah? Does anybody have any idea what neuroplasticity is? I do, and a lot of people do, and I wanna help you understand it. Because what neuroplasticity is, is intersystemic communication of the body adapting to any stimulus you offer that body at any given time of your life. Whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're injured, whether you're healthy. The endogenous cannabinoid system, most of the main cannabinoid receptors of which are throughout your central nervous system, the brain, the brain stem, the spinal cord, those CB1 receptors can absolutely take in THC and CBD and beta carophyllin and a few other cannabinoids. And it can stimulate wonderful intersystemic communication from the central nervous system to the peripheral nervous system, namely the immune system. And it's not like it's going to secrete this amount of immune cells and make all these dra you know, dramatic changes. What it's going to do is mediate. There is one neurotransmitter. I take that back. There are two neurotransmitters in the human body that move rebelliously in a retrograde fashion. Shouldn't mean anything to you until you decide that dopamine and serotonin and acetylcholine and epinephrine and these other neurotransmitters that we all hear about in depressions, in anxieties, in autoimmune disorders like Alzheimer's, those dopamine and serotonin secretions are mediated by cannabinoids that move backwards in a rebellious fashion. 
Because as soon as that neurotransmitter, dopamine or, secreted, or, or serotonin is secreted into your bloodstream, into your brain, there's this sort of cleanup crew that comes in, figures out what just went on and reports so that the next time you meet that stimulus, you can meet it ever so slightly more efficiently. And that system has the capacity to communicate with every system in the body. Cannabinoid receptors are in every type of tissue in the body. Are you kidding me? That's interesting. I've been studying science my whole life, and that's the most interesting thing I've ever heard. I promise. It's one of the most interesting things you've ever heard, too. You just might not know it yet. That's OK. You don't have to be smart to understand this, I promise. The only thing I'm smart at is movement and this. And both are from experience. I want you to understand that this is the future of medicine. You've heard of opioid chemistry, yeah? The opioid epidemic, painkiller epidemic? Opium is a plant that started a slew of pain relieving options for people from heroin to morphine to oxycontin to all these things. But it's a plant and those concentrations over several hundred years of research and adaptation and, and application were made into absurd, absurd, deeply concentrated pain relieving compounds that are now based in opioid chemistry but it, you know, there's so much other stuff in there now. There's marketing behind it. There's all kinds of weird things that pump those things into our bloodstream. And then we have addictions with very intelligent people, very ordinary people, very healthy people otherwise. Not street druggies, moms and dads. I'm sorry? Big pharma. Big pharma. <laughs> what we have is a, an undeal withable human condition of addiction in the presence of chemistry that is so strong that our simple primal brains don't know what to do with it. But there's this, of course, of course, of course, there's this incredible scientifically proven feature of the endogenous cannabinoid system to block the dopamine receptors of pleasure in the body and to compete with those receptor sites so that when you're trying to break the addiction of opioids or whatever you're trying to break the addiction of, you can. You get a head start. You get support. I'm not going to go into the chemistry of how that happens except one thing. Your endogenous cannabinoid system is only as good as is practiced, I would say, but more importantly than that, it's only as good as it's supported and fed. We start hearing about diets for things like fat loss, and we hear about diets for autoimmune disorders and, and for everything out there from Crohn's disease to back pain to uh, you know, anxiety and depression. There is a food component that people talk about. We've gone very far down the pathway of omega-3 fatty acids, which are very healthy for the human brain. There's no question about it. They're very healthy for the human brain. But we've taken that ratio so far that we're taking supplements that are only omega-3 fatty acids. And we're getting these kind of short-term bursts of joy and happiness in our brain, maybe even thinking a little bit more coherently. But we are forgetting a very important thing. The breakdown of omega-6 fatty acid, arachidonic acid, leads to two things, anandamide, CB1, plentiful throughout the entire central nervous system, brain, major higher function of human being components. Anandamide is a breakdown of arachidonic acid, omega-6. The other one, two arachidonal glycerol-ish, 2-AG, is a breakdown of arachidonic acid, omega-6 fatty acid. We have to have inflammatants in our body. Omega-6 is an inflammatory fatty acid. With that inflammation comes the body's response of anti-inflammation. And with anti-inflammation comes radical intersystemic communication from the central nervous system to the immune system and back. From the digestive system to the immune system and back. The endogenous cannabinoid system is only as good as how well you feed it. And it's fed with things like avocado oils, pumpkin seeds, things that are high in omega fatty acids, all of them. But don't get marketed into thinking that piecemealing of chemistry is how you get better, because it's not. It might be the way that you help a symptom. You get a pharmaceutical for your blood pressure, for your pain, for whatever. Go, by all means, help the system, help the symptom. But feed the endogenous cannabinoid system, because you don't need pot to stimulate it. It just so happens that it also does. You can hit it faster with marijuana. 
But even still, the healthier your body, the healthier the ecosystem in the gut, the healthier you feed yourself, the less impediments to the, rece the reception of your cannabinoid system, the more likely your body is going to be able to break old pain patterns, break old thought patterns, move into the newer version of yourself that you'd like to be. It's moving from complacent adaptation to active adaptation. Things like cryotherapy have gotten a tremendous amount of accolade lately for their pain relief and nervous system calming impacts. And if you go just a little bit of research down the line, you know, just Google it, cryotherapy and endogenous cannabinoid system, and you're going to get about 30 articles that tell you why that works. It's a trip. It's wild. I couldn't believe what was happening as I started researching this stuff deeper and deeper. It makes everything I teach in biomechanics make so much more sense to me. And the reason that people get better when they change biomechanics makes so much more sense to me now. You need space in your central nervous system. You need room for cannabinoid receptors. You need nutrients to feed the system so that the system works well and is available to you when you're ready to use it, when you need it. If you're extremely sensitive to your inner system, it's because your endogenous cannabinoid system is likely working pretty well. You just might need to feed it a little bit more to get you over that inflammatory hump. What I offer all of you is not to stand up here and take anything I've said as word or truth or gospel or anything like that, but get your butt on Google, look up things like Project CBD, do the research on pain management and endogenous cannabinoids. Do the research on what happens when you have beta carophyllin with CBDs and all of a sudden you get an exponentially effective, less dosage needed environment in which your body can actually reply and respond to stress extremely well, better each time you stress yourself. One thing I tell patients all the time is stop avoiding stress. If you do yoga, if you do movement, if you do meditation, don't do it to avoid stretch, stress. Do it because your body is designed to hit stress in the face and come back from it. And every time you hit it and come back from it, you get better, you get more efficient, you develop the skill of coming back from a stressor, moving towards homeostasis, towards health. The better you get at moving from a stressor towards health, the more you're exercising your simple practice of neuroplasticity. And again, that neuroplastic process, that neuroplastic potentiation is governed and mediated by the endogenous cannabinoid system in or out of the presence of the ganja. Okay? You gotta know that. The only reason we know we have this system that every single mammal on earth has, it's older than us, is because we started using the plant and we started finding things that were really, really impressive in science. The more I read the science of cannabis, the more I think about the effects that patients of mine have had personally, that I have had personally in my own life, that friends of mine who are brilliant, powerful, influential human beings have had because they fuel their body right, they live well, they exercise well, they eat well. So when they need the cannabinoid system, it is present to make them steadily better versions of themselves. The science I've read, the facts I've seen, the people I know, Science is there. The stigma is the only thing existing around this anymore. And the stigma doesn't deserve what it is. <clears throat> Can you become a pothead? Absolutely. Can you get lazy with this stuff? Of course. Of course. But that's your own fault. Feed yourself well. Think well. Learn well. Live well. Be around inspirational people and do inspirational things. And I promise you, no matter how much pot you smoke or how many endogenous cannabinoid system receptacles you use, be it diet, cold baths, exercise, whatever, you will never become a burnout. You will inspire a lot of people and you'll let people recognize that while cannabis is a gateway, it is a gateway to health. It is a gateway to breaking addictions. It's a gateway to breaking patterns and if you use it well, you'll surprise the shit out of a lot. <laughs> Thank you very much.